It's time to take action. Gamers, rise up! Uh, actually, you could do it sitting down if that's more comfortable. Whatever works for you. The point is that there's been major headway in the quest to stop publishers from destroying games after sale by shutting down online servers. A citizen's initiative has been launched in the EU that could become law if it gathers enough signatures. That's right, gamers. We must overcome the greatest boss fight of all time. Finding the motivation to fill out a form. Do I need a printer? The initiative is pretty simple. It states that publishers selling or licensing games to consumers in the EU, which is most games, to leave them in a functional state after shutdown. How they accomplish that is up to them. The initiative needs to get 1 million signatures from EU citizens in one year, and each person gets one shot. Mom Spaghetti, to sign correctly. If you mess up, your signature might be invalidated. Fortunately, StopKillingGames.com has guides for multiple countries on how to properly sign, and we love guides. So go there if you're worried about goofing it up. Not in the EU? No problem, there's also options for other countries and regions to support the movement. But if you're an EU citizen and you're wondering why you should bother signing, Ross Scott, who started the Stop Killing Games initiative, has a good explainer video. And I know videos. If that doesn't convince you, well, here's an argument. Please? Please save gaming? I'd really appreciate it if you saved gaming. Thank you. Xbox hardware sales have dropped by nearly half and Microsoft does not care. Listen, they don't need to care if their business is failing. And that's because their business is succeeding. Microsoft CFO Amy Hood has stated she wants to turn Xbox into a subscription business. And that seems to be a good move. While hardware sales have dropped by 42%, revenue from Xbox content and services is up by 61% from last year. That's important because sources tell me 61 is bigger than 42. But not as big as 69. Yet. Even without hardware, Xbox is excited about games. Maybe too excited? Xbox announced that they will be showing off over 50 titles at their Gamescom booth, and it turns out they slightly overpromised. Studio Wildcard's long-awaited ARC sequel was mistakenly listed as playable at the Xbox booth before the company acknowledged the mistake. But at least that game is real. Xbox also claimed that a game called Descenders 2 would be present, but the publisher of the original game has tweeted that Descenders 2 does not exist. But can you blame Xbox for dreaming? Maybe you can, maybe, yeah. Bungie has laid off 220 developers and 155 other employees have been absorbed into Sony, the gelatinous mass. In a written statement, Bungie CEO Pete Parsons said the studio was overly ambitious and did everything they could to avoid the layoffs. Well, everything except cutting executive pay. After the last layoffs, IGN reported that when employees asked if studio leadership had considered taking a pay cut to prevent the layoffs, they were told Bungie was not that type of company. A lot of finger guns, I imagine. Parsons was obviously a target of ire from the hundreds of developers who lost their jobs, but fortunately, he made his Twitter account private just before the news broke. Bit ironic since his account bio says, be brave. Good job, Parsons. It says that underneath, be rich. <laughs> be rich, be brave, in that order. Now, to be fair to Petey, he might not be in full control here. Insider Jeff Grubb has suggested that Bungie is losing its independence from parent company Sony, saying that Herman Holst, CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment Studio Business Group, now runs Bungie. Having said that, Grubb also said that a project codenamed Payback, rumored to be the next Destiny installment, was canceled due to the layoffs. Jason Schreier has disputed this and said payback was canceled a while ago. And that's still bad news. But here's the good news. Our sponsor, Private Internet Access. Their VPN network spans across six continents and 91 countries, Buster, letting you access your local catalog of content from all over the globe. Plus, with a single subscription, you get unlimited connections, making it easy to run PIA on practically any device. They just concluded their second security audit, putting further emphasis on your privacy and security. And if you're still not convinced, they're 100% open source, and you're free to go digging through the code yourself for peace of mind. So go check out PIA at lmg.gg slash PIA game linked, or by using our link in the description for a special deal with a risk-free 30-day money back guarantee. I love quick bits, and I feel like they love me too. They've never said it, but it feels real. Avowed, Obsidian Entertainment's upcoming RPG is allegedly being delayed from fall this year to early next year. This is according to Tom Warren of The Verge. He says that while a game is in good shape, 
the Game Pass holiday season is a bit too crowded. Specifically, the inciting incident seems to be Stalker 2 itself being delayed to this November. Hear me out, Microsoft. What if you delayed Black Ops 6 instead? No? Because it'll make you way more money. Way, way, way more money. Fair enough. Speaking of Call of Duty, Activision is rolling out a ban wave after the cheater numbers spiked last week when Modern Warfare 3 launched on Game Pass. It was speculated that part of this increase was due to the PC Game Pass players appearing as Xbox console players, making cheaters harder to spot. Activision disputed that was the issue, but didn't specify any further, probably so that cheaters don't know what's going on. So instead, they made it seem like they didn't know what's going on. That's, that's 2D chess, baby. Endor AG, parent company to racing sim giant Fnatic, has filed for insolvency. The company had amassed 95 million euros in debt, which considering their typical annual sales revenue of only about 100 million euros, is a lot. According to both Endor AG and Fnatic, the company is expecting an orderly restructuring, where software updates, sales, and RMA services continue uninterrupted. It's even possible that the company will be acquired by its investor and business partner Corsair. If all goes well, it'll be like this whole catastrophic bankruptcy business never happened. The Cybertruck has come to Fortnite, and so far it's exactly as buggy and broken in the metaverse as it is in the meat space. For one, driving the truck renders players unable to use several important game items afterwards. It also makes you unable to find someone to have sex with. You can't cyber? <laughs> The Cybertruck is also apparently immune to the tow rope grappling hook, which is unfortunate for a vehicle that typically needs its first tow less than an hour after leaving the parking lot. Got him. It is likewise easier to eliminate an enemy player who has hitched a ride on your vehicle, though it's possible that they are simply dying of embarrassment. And EA has pushed a fix for The Sims 4 that will hopefully stop Sims from looking for a date at the family reunion. The bug was introduced, that's not a, that's not a bug. The, feature. The, in Quebec, the bug was introduced in a recent update that was supposed to make neighborhood sims outside the player's household act more autonomously, and arguably it succeeded a little too well. It actually coincided with another bug that led to file corruptions and yet another that made sims inexplicably mean to one another, shifting the tone from Pleasantville to Game of Thrones. Plus, this is actually the second time in two years that a bug has led to sims getting tangled in the Targaryen tango. And you're welcome to Tango on back next Tuesday for another episode of Gaming News. Argentine style. <laughs>